Powered by Riverside. Welcome back to the Movement for Life podcast. My name is Colby Christofik, the owner and operator here at Oxnard, California. And today I am joined by one of our coaches, Coach Isabel, uh, who has been on this podcast early when we started this podcast. Uh, we are going to go through several weeks of meeting the staff and coaches of Oxnard Movement. Um, all of our members get to see these coaches in action and they get to see the fitness side of all of our staff but they maybe don't know a lot of the non-fitness side of our staff so i thought it would be a really fun idea to get to know some of our coaches on a more personal level before we get into it though we always start out these podcasts the same way we start out talking about ways that we moved in the previous week so I'm going to throw it over to Isabel. Isabel, what did you do to move in the last week? Hello, everyone. Um, last week, I was able to work out twice out of the three that I plan on working and coach three, three days I coached. So that keeps me moving yesterday. Um, yesterday was our first Sunday endurance class. I That's made sure right. that I walked around because I, yeah, walked around everywhere. I got my steps in and that matter for the hour. And that's what I did. Worked out and coached. That's great. Um, how did that go? I, I saw some photos. It looked like there was 15 people here. They loved it. Yeah. It looked they like a totally I liked fun it. class. Um, yeah. And I hope to uh, hope to continue and I hope to, to just get a different crowd or even just the same crowd over and over. And then they can see the difference that they can literally grow their endurance and strengthen it. Very fun. Very fun. Um, good, good. I did three classes last week. That was the first time in several weeks um, that I got to do three classes. I felt really good about that. I have been very, very busy the last several weeks. And then before that in the summertime, so I haven't been doing a lot of CrossFit. And this last week was the first time that I was back into three days a week of CrossFit and felt good to finally be at CrossFit for three days. Then I also got to do, um, I got to go to the islands this last weekend and I saw, did some yeah. swimming, did some diving in the ocean, went lobster diving, tried to catch a lobster unsuccessfully, jumped off the side of the boat. We did some halyard swings, did all sorts of fun um stuff as well there's a slew of things that went wrong but there was a lot of stuff that was a ton of fun and super active as well so yeah that is what nice. i did this last week as well um all right let's i i i want to kind of get into this and i want to get to know isabel a little bit more and let all of our members and viewers get to know you a little bit more as well so i want to know really far back and so you're gonna kind of have to think about some stuff yeah what? open up my memory box here <laughs> yeah How i want to know me? some of your favorite subjects in high school i want to know some of the things that you liked learning about I or maybe you didn't like learning in high school tell me about I some of your high school experience high school is a long time ago i know what year, what year were you born colby I think we had already talked about this. I think you graduated high school. I graduated the year that I was born. in the year that you were born. How old are we today? Yes. I am. Um, I graduated 32. Channel Islands. I... Yeah. <laughs> I don't think of high school anymore. I see a few friends out and about, and um, we're all okay. different walks of life. Um, uh, subjects in high school back in 1992. Um, let's see. I remember liking biology. Okay. I didn't have. Yeah, I remember liking biology just for the fact of the dissecting and the knowledge of of the cool stuff. I think I thought that was cool, but never did I have like an interest to like oh, I'm going to be a biologist or yeah. or keep going with that. Um, dislike math, disliked it. 
I, okay. I, if I remember, I barely graduated with grades, barely, barely. Um, history was not my thing. English was not my thing. Let's see, what else did we have? Health. I think I liked health. What was health like, class like? Health, um, health was just, um, I remember the, the teacher was Mr. Matthews back then. He was so cool. He was like the buff, the, 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 the bodybuilding teacher, like the, the buff amazing. guy right there. Um, yeah. So he looked like he was a healthy guy. Um, talked about childhood, growing up, uh, hygiene, um, okay. vegetables, you know, the basic, you know, eat the yeah. nutrition, vegetables and stuff. Yeah. And then the, not so much about the, 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 this is what the girl looks like. This is what the boy, none, none of that sexual education stuff until like mm. deeper into like, I don't know, possibly into the course. But um, it, it was just fascinating to like health and then the diseases and stuff that your teenager year was like, and the word, you know, possibly uh, the high blood pressure goes through your head and you're yeah. like, whatever, you know, you're thinking about what well, the boy Chronic that you saw last night like, or whatever, nah. you know, you're, you're not interested unless you're interested yeah. in that subject. But that was interesting yeah. when um for for the for the beginning part of it, um okay just like chemistry, yeah yeah just not, so, did not like so much the biology but not like, necessarily all the other sciences which that had to be cool and I was just like cool and that was it. But did you have a fun enough. teacher for biology? Was the teacher like make things interesting? Yeah, they had so we we used to play with snakes. They would let the snakes out and then they had tarantulas Holy and smokes. like stuff. And it was like that was cool. Like that's a cool teacher. <laughs> Yeah. But if they that definitely makes class they were to way do more that fun. today, I don't know if they do that. I have no idea what what they no teach way. today. There's no chance they... they're taking snakes out in mm -hmm. classrooms anymore. Yeah, um, that's cool. Yeah. So after after high school, well, I'm not sure how much more after high school, but tell me about what what was your first job after high school, or did you go to college uh, during... after high school? What, what did you no, do? No, I I actually I went to like a half a semester to Ventura College. Um, okay. To be honest with you, I was not the greatest attendee at school, at regular high school. I was that girl ditched. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to just ditch, not show up. My friends would go that way. And I'm like, let's go. Um, I was this close to not graduating for my attendance. Um, oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you think I'm a goody two-shoes now? <laughs> Back then. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I was this close to not graduating just because of my attendance. And uh, I had to, like, finish stacks and stacks of extra paperwork extra homework or oh, not homework the homework that the teacher gave me a chance to turn it in and i was like i can't do that in two weeks oh yeah but where was i i don't even know where i was uh we just didn't feel like going to school we were just in our rooms just you know painting our nails and just watching tv um just doing don't ditch people don't ditch. it it kicks you <laughs> in the butt later <laughs> um and so what else um i think so i got a you... job yeah, i got a job at taco job? bell Right across the oh, street right. from our house. Yes, Taco okay. Bell. Um, Is that Taco Bell still there? The first no, one that you worked at? No. Where my parents okay. live, now it's a Starbucks. Okay. It's over by, you know, Oxnard, South Oxnard. There's mm -hmm. a McDonald's, a U-Haul, and it was a Taco Bell right next to McDonald's. Okay. Yeah. And um, worked there for a little bit, and grades started to plummet even lower. And so okay. you, you fall in love with the money. You know, it's easy cash. Yeah. And then um, the minimum wage back then was compared to what it is like today. Like three, three, four dollars. I remember it was like four, four, fifteen, four twenty-five, and okay, that was the lifestyle we that was the life the what we had, you know. Yeah. And um, so that didn't last very long, and my grades were pulled. Well, pulled my permit out, I guess, pulled me out. Okay. And so I was like, okay, whatever, you know. Didn't really have those parents to tell me this is not what you do, honey. You're not going to go anywhere like this. Yeah. And then after that, my senior year, I got a job at McDonald's. Okay. And it was like May. And then from there, I just, I stayed there for a good 10 years. So I grew okay. when I was manager, swing manager, shift manager, and then I was assist assistant manager. And I was like, I don't like this. I don't like this. And then I met my then husband there and yeah. had my daughter. And it's like, I wanted to go to beauty school since I was in high school. And I okay. remember going to ask, I remember going to ask, how much, you know, does it cost to come to beauty school? At that time, I was 18, you know, jobless, pretty much. Um, it was yeah. $3,300, which was possibly like $30,000 today, right? Um, yeah. $3,300. And I was like, oh, I can't afford that. There's no way my parents are going to pay for college when, you know, regular college out here was free, uh, the yeah. general education. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to go 
when I was not going to a free public school, I just didn't see myself going to a, I got to pay to go to, like, I just didn't yeah. make sense to me. So I went to the yeah. trade school and then I went there and then I was like, oh, I can't do this. So then I got the job at McDonald's and stuff and I was yep. working and then I got Myra. And then I was like, I want to go to beauty school. I want to go to beauty college. It was called beauty college back then. And then okay. um, I was the one girl cutting my friend's bangs and doing their hair for prom and just, I yeah. don't know, I, whatever my brain was, let's do this and let's do that. And they would trust me. And then we'd get like, I needed a water bottle, cut your hair. And we'd go find any water bottle. Didn't think about like stuff like Windex, Wait, you right? you needed a water bottle? A water like bottle a to bottle? cut their hair. A spray bottle, yes. Oh. A spray bottle, yes. I thought and it meant so like drinking like, water. No, no, no. Well, see, spray, uh, back then it's a water bottle, a spray bottle. Yeah. And we're like, didn't think of like saving it in a cup and then putting, you know, I would just dump it down the drain and put water and rinse it. And then there goes someone's money, Windex, you know? And yeah. it's like, those are the stuff we think about. Remember, I was like, remember how we used to just dump the good stuff out of the drain? And then, oh, um, that's funny. Yeah. So then I had Myra and then I think it was my sister. He's like, when are you going to go to beauty school? Be beauty school. And I was like, can I know? You know, I don't know. And then I go, I'll wait till Myra's in kindergarten. That way she gives me some time, you know, free time. And yep. as soon as she was in kindergarten, she reminded me again. And I was like, okay, let me go ask. And then luckily they said, um, yeah, well, you can bring your, w um, your W-2s and see if you qualify for financial aid. Oh, okay. okay. And I go get my paycheck stub and whatever. And yeah, sure enough. So at that time, the so five years later, it went up to 7,700. Wow. So that is double. Wow. And right Doubled now it's five like years. double, triple. It is like some 30,000 right now. Um, wow. And so I took my W-2s and all that good stuff. And then sure enough, I qualified for $4,400. So they gave me that, uh, that money to pay half. And then I still yeah. ended up paying $3,300. Okay. So I was like, okay. I five years later. Three, yeah, five years. Yeah. You get a raise of 575 or something. And so I just started going to school. And then How I couldn't did handle. How long beauty school? How long did that, that take you? 53 weeks. So it's a year. It's a good year. Oh, wow. Did yeah, you get wait, like weeks. time off in between or is it like almost it's, a 52 weeks straight? You go, you go as best as you go, attendance. And some people there have children, they're married and uh, mm -hmm. two jobs. And they, they, yeah. So I had a full time job as a manager, rate hours, uh, four to 1 a.m. sometimes, you know, eight to six. And that school requires Monday through Friday. No, or was it Tuesday through Saturday? I forgot what it was, but it was an eight to three job. So I would uh, wake up. I remember just seeing the shower, the bed, and school and work. Shower, bed, school and work. And I was like, I did yeah. that for six months, and I kept saying, I got, I, I don't know what to do. Like, what did I get myself into? Yeah. Um, what do I want more to get a career, to get a, a license, or to stay at work and quit Go that? Back. Yeah. And yep. I'm not a quitter. I, I'm not a quitter. I'm like, once you start a course, you finish the course, and then see what, see what, what you got out of it. Yeah. And so I, I was like six months into it, and I was like. I, I, I couldn't do it. And then having a five-year-old, and then I was just like, yeah. I couldn't do it. And then I just told the husband at that time, I was like, I want to quit. I want to quit my job. I want to quit my job. And um, he's like, no, no, let's pay this bill up. Let's pay this credit card. Let's no, I'll do it. I'm sorry. And one day I came, I'm like, I did it. I quit. I just quit. Yeah. I walked out. And then, then I had all this time, all this time, spare time. I was like, whoa. An extra 40 hours. Whoa. <laughs> What do I do? And so I started just to focus on it. And then I just didn't yeah. miss every day. I had nothing to hold me back. I was like sitting here and yeah. there, absent there. Um, I always had to like ask requests for, I could take my daughter to the doctor, just being a mom, you know? Yeah. And so I finished and I got my license. And then I went from like, you know, back then making, making good money at, at the McDonald's. Um, I was possibly making like maybe 33, 34,000 a year. Okay. Yeah. And In that went down to zero. To zero. Yeah. And to me, it was like, whoa, <laughs> instant, you know, rude awakening there. Um, yeah. So for those of you guys who don't know uh, hair, I get paid for what I do. So if I'm sitting there with no one in my chair, there is no income coming in. So yeah. you have to, you know, get better at your, 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 your craft and, and then just be a good person that they want to go see and they want to talk to you. And so then that took me, I've been doing that for um, going on 20 Back in 2001, I got licensed. So, yeah, 23 years um, of doing air. Can, when you got your license, did you immediately start working in a chair at a salon? Did you have your own space? Were you at mm, home? No, I went in to work for a salon and I was, I had no, I was lost. I had no clue that 
that yeah. you could have assisted somebody, that you could have learned, mm. taking your time. But the place that I got was like, okay, you got four haircuts coming in today, and you're just like, no. okay, I've only practiced on my sister, my mom, my daughter, and whatever my daughter yeah. has uh, mistakes. Yeah. It was just going there. Show me what you And then that was most of my most of my mistakes were done the first few years. Early days. First early days. Every so often I think about that person. God, why hell? But gave him such a bad haircut. Do, I don't do that. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but we stylists have to go through either. It can be you that we screw up, but we won't ever do it again. Like it, yeah. we need heads. We just need people. And yeah, there's so an, it's, there's it's definitely hard. an early phase of that where you're like, I know some basics, but yeah, I'm probably gonna mess up. Yeah. Um, but then it sounds like there was years and years and years and years of practice and getting better at your craft. At, at, yeah, at everything. Yeah. At, what point? And we didn't did... have YouTube. We did not have YouTube back no. then. No, nada. There was, and now yeah, there was I can easily experience say, well, only. Good. Yeah, it was whatever you can look, and some people didn't like to be watched. And now I'm like, I'm I'm the one there. Like, can I watch Erica? And I'm like, I just remember back then, like, do I like Don't. to be watched? And I'm like, yeah, well, they they want to. You wanted to watch the old the older ladies back then, and they would yeah. tell you, can you just not watch me? Because I don't like. Oh my god. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm like, well, it's like, you know your stuff. It's not like you're going to screw up. Yeah. Like, it's not like you're going to screw it up. So just do your thing. Yeah. And let them, let their brain see what you're doing. Oh, I got it. Okay. I see what you did that for. And yeah. Um. So at at what point did you leave working for another salon? And did you get your own chair at that point? Or did you rent a space? At that point? I, I mean, um, I know I did... there's a ton of dynamics and like yeah. what you were. I've only can worked do. for three salons. The first okay. salon was just, this is what salon industry is going to be like. And I was like, I don't, I don't like it. Stuck there for about six to Ugh. eight months. I think it was like six to eight months. Okay. That's pretty quick. It, 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 that, that salon closed. So we're, all the salons are way different. You either got right. ghetto salons, you got little rinky-dinky little corner salons, but the ladies there, they're, we're they're all doing. different. We're all different. Oh. And um, structure, as soon as I got to, and then I went to another one and, that one lasted her for like maybe six months. She wasted so much okay. money to open up a salon. And I was like, where am I here? And that, at that time, I was pregnant with Victor. I was pregnant, Good. three months pregnant. And I was like, okay, well, that was a wrong move. And why did I quit? And then I was just like, okay, well, I leave, you know, I'm still at home with the husband. He's bringing in income. And then I went over to Sky Salon. That's where I've been. And then I just told her, you know, this is it. I, I just need to find a home. I need to find a home, yeah. find a chair. And, uh, and, and. I I work 40, I know how to work 40, 60 hours a week. And I was just being honest with her. And yeah. she gave me a chance. Yeah, she, she was like, okay, bring your haircut. And one of my uh, friends from, from beauty school, she was like, you can come here. You can do whatever you want. And yeah. so I went in there. I dressed her as a client. And she was my friend. And, and I gave her a haircut. She was like, oh, you did pretty good. And I was like, okay. And so from there, I made lesser and lesser mistakes when I was there in the beginning. But the yeah. rest was just on myself just I did, I'm sorry and then I just learned all by myself and every time that the word YouTube would come out and I'm like what is that I don't know what that is I didn't even know what the yeah. word Wi-Fi was back then you know and yeah, so and we just the network what's network I mean we I was I was learning all these terms and you guys all grow up with it you know yeah um and then I just grew I just grew from there and that took me about a year and a half possibly two when I started to rent my chair and then okay. That was it. So I was, at, I had at first, clients. that's, that's at first it, yeah. she gives you clients. Okay. Yeah. Great. She, uh, yeah. So then after that, I don't get any walk-in clients. So either you yeah. have to be ready, secure with enough people um, that they like you, that you like them, that wow. you don't have to charge. And then you just grow. It's all word of mouth. And you you guys are a walking billboard when you guys walk out of there. Yeah. You know, imagine absolutely. if you go in there and I'm like, just thrash your hair and, you know, whoa, what happened to you? And it just. Either you say, "What's some girl in Isabel, Sky Salon," you know, um, or yep. you're like, "Hey, bad hit, nice haircut," you know. Yep. And that's all um, it is. So only only two years before, basically, yeah, you were more or less a small business owner. Yeah, and I, and, and, been... I, and it's funny to say, like, you're a small business owner. Believe it or not, I'm a smaller business owner, but we have the same everything adds up yep. everything. Profit and loss, and you know, inventory. It's all the same yeah. thing, just different numbers. Yeah, that was that's a maybe a, have, a good yeah. question. Is like, what are 
what, as a small business owner, what are some of the most challenging things that you find on, on, I would say the business end? I think we can both agree that our favorite part, the easiest part is delivering of the service. Like I love yeah. coaching. I yeah. love teaching. I love being in the gym. I um, love when my clients are like, how old Victor? No way. Oh my God. I remember when you were the baby. I remember when you were pregnant and I'm like, God, girl, that was like 18, 19 years ago. So I, I yeah. like the fact that there's history. I've yep. seen their kids grow up. They've seen my kids grow up. Um, there's this couple that I have, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend. And I remember her. And then I remember her boyfriend. Then it was her fiance. And then it's her boy. And that kid's almost 18 years old already. And I've, yeah. oh, I've been the only one who cut them, their hair, them three. Nobody else has touched them. And every time he wow. comes in, I'm like, tell me your age. Please don't tell me your <laughs> age. And he's like, mm, my birthday's next month. I'm going to be 14 or, you know, and they, yeah. I grow with them. They grow with me and I grow with them. That's fun. Yeah. So that's a, that's a fun part. Tell me that's something that's, part. that you, that you're like, man, I could Honestly, do without ever doing this again. It's when they die on you. It's oh. when you hear like, so-and-so had a car accident and they're gone. I'm like, oh, wait, what? Like. Like, yeah how, like how does this happen but you know and they let you know and then you're just like mm, for a while until you're like life that's life you know sucks. yeah that is a that or is a really hard you part about have, um you know cancer and stuff like that you're just like you like them you love people. them so much that you're you're already like tied tied to them yeah that's the rough yeah, part i think it that is one of the hardest parts of of working with people for sure um, yeah. like when the you're connection, the, you, we have a connection with them here too. It's the same, yeah. the same thing. Yeah. You, you get to experience highs with people, but you also get to experience lows with people yeah. for sure. Um, and then everybody from all different part. walks of life. Yeah. Everything that happens, all the tragic stuff that happens in life, the, the, the marriages, the divorces, the, 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 the yeah. losing a son, losing a daughter, losing the, that's all there. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then it's at some point, Later in your life, thanks for sharing about small business stuff. That's fun. And it's, you said you've been doing it, hair cutting for 20 plus 20 years now. Yeah. You said plus 20 years. What, and I'm not tired was, of it yet. Um, Physically, I get tired, but, you know, emotionally and still enjoyable. mentally, yeah, it's, it's still fun. The girls there were family, taking home. And yeah. Um, so later in your life, you found fitness as well. Yes. Um, I remember we were talking in our first podcast, mm -hmm. you were somewhat active, but like working out in a, in a fitness community was not really something that your Put family really valued or, or yeah. did. Um, give us a little bit of like where, when or where you found CrossFit. CrossFit, CrossFit was introduced by or, one of our, our my co ex coworkers. Um, she was like, there's this new thing, you know, da, 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 this and that. And I was like, well, what is it? And at that time I was involved in, you know, 24 hour fitness, you know, okay. basic machines an hour. It was boring. Everybody had their headset on and nobody talks to each other. You know, everyone knows yeah. the global life. Right. And then I pick up a dumbbell and I'm like, Ooh, and then I was playing with big, big numbers. I was playing 25 that feels light, 35, 45s. I was doing like, well, what is that girl over there doing? And I would just copy and mimic people. Um, and okay. so, like, I'm going to get a trainer, you know? And I put my money down and yeah, 10 courses for, what, like $1,100, right? It was, like, yeah. it was a lot. And they put on some weight on my back. And I'm like, what are we doing? Like a death lift. Like, what, I, don't, like I don't do this kind of stuff. So it was introduced to me, and um, the body liked it, Ooh, mm -hmm. which was resistant training. Yeah. And so from there, I was like, I like this. Like, this makes me feel strong duh you know um yeah clueless i walked in clueless and so i was introduced to resistant training there and then she tells me it's like a hundred and some dollars back then was cheaper i'm sorry guys it was way cheaper mm -hmm. for crossfit um and she's like you should try it and she invited me to a competition and uh you know simple thing like like how we have you know as many reps as possible and you know i think it was like a 12 minute amp ramp and she had to do you know five snatches whatever it is and I started screaming at her, like, Bang it up. like, how can you just stop? You're not done. Like, <laughs> I have no idea that we crash. Like, we fall and start hurting, you know? Um, and she was like, 
how much does this weigh? And I pick up the barbell with one arm. And I was like, this is like, this is light, 35 pounds, whatever. That's funny. And she had like the little, two little blues on it. And I'm like, girl, you know, but she was, you know, light and fit to do gymnastics yeah. on the, on, on the rig. She can do handstand walks and she could do all that stuff. Yeah. But when it came to barbell, it was, and then called and uh, I was like, oh, I can't pay that price. But I was like, oh, you're paying 10 times more over there. And so I just, I just jumped for it and haven't left. Yeah, and that's amazing. Yeah, so that that was like 2000, was in, uh, 2012 or early 2013? 2013, 2013. But I was very inconsistent the first few years. The first, I was in, I was out, all my shoulder hurts, three weeks off, and, and, and you know, go back in, and then get it going, and then this hurt, and then the ankle, and it was just everything. Because I was doing everything wrong. I was doing, like, not the modifications that I should have been doing. And coaching was way different back then. Way yeah, different. I'm, I'm curious to... Because I've been in it um, for about that long as well. I've been in it since 2012. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious to kind of hear your, from an athlete's perspective, because I've had the shifts in perspective as well as coaches, but what's been your like athlete's perspective of like, how has CrossFit changed or how has the, how has I've, the gym I've changed? Because you've been shared, at the same gym. Yeah. Yeah. This oh, you, time. you, the whole CrossFit Oxnard has changed drastically, it, all in a good way. Um, and I've mentioned you that you, when you came to the picture, oh, oh my God, I saw the changes immediately. You, uh. you, you, you did great. Um, the ex owner back then, you know, starting new affiliate, blah, 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 um, had, you know, four women's barbells and, you know, four men's barbells had lesser equipment, right? Yeah. The wall balls were all pink and black and there was no yellow, no gray, no green, none of that. Yeah. Um, those probably came out later. Later, later, or they were probably there and you didn't want to purchase them all, right? Yeah. And like the dumbbell, you know, 35s, 25s, 35. They wanted strong people. And yeah. so I had to get those 35s. And this is hard. And, you know, scaling was only like more like uh, the, the programming was as many reps. We had, we did a lot of more rounds and reps, rounds and reps. So, you know, the girl over there did, you know, four rounds. And I'm like, they did two. But, you know, yeah. I was doing the RX weights. Yeah. Um, you know, everything to the pull-ups, like say progression, we only had, uh, the bands. So I was on the bands. I didn't know that there was a box. I didn't know that there was like ring rows or, you know, I didn't know. Um, I thought yeah. the ring rows were just for ring dips, you know? Yeah. Um, there was like, again, lesser and lesser YouTube videos and stuff. So yeah. Progressions now is like, oh, well, how come nobody started me on ring? So how come nobody started <laughs> me on, 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 you know, a six pound wall ball for God's sake, you know? And yeah. so, yeah, that's cool. because maybe I was going too hard, too heavy. I was like, I'm going to take two weeks off. And I was in and out. And that gives you a lot of perspective now because oh, yeah. you're on, <laughs> you're on so, staff. And so you see mm -hmm. the complete opposite. You see the beginner come in and maybe there's no have way that we can throw a 14. Yeah. Mentality is you. And you're yeah. like, Hey, look, like, trust me. I learned the hard yeah. way. I've used those words. I'm like, trust me from experience. Let's do it the right way. Let's start at zero. Yeah. But if you're, if you zero level is hard, let's do negative one. You know, we can do this and we're going to get there. And then they just like, oh my God, that was hard. I'm like, and then I get their feedback. And then yeah. next thing I'm like, hey, do you want to try level one? And he's like, mm, sure. And then I'm like, okay, let's cut the reps in half. And then yeah. they like, they like the, the progression that we're doing with them. And yeah, then I think, I one think the really cool things, I'm training them the way I would have loved to be trained. Mm. And then I, I see like their that. growth. Yeah. Um, I also think one of the things that is, you, you talk about learning from experience as well. And, but I think one of the things that you, and I imagine you don't talk about enough in, in the cosmetology or the beauty school world is you also seek outside um, education as well. You're one of the coaches that has the most online certifications that you could possibly get at mm -hmm. our space. Um, you you like are invested in learning. You want to learn and be better. Um, and I and I imagine that you do the same. It's not yes, you've been doing hair for a very very long time, and yes, you're getting better because of experience. But mm -hmm. part of that experience is like intentional education. Um, yes, and I think that that is true in both of these as well. Um, not only are you learning from experience in the CrossFit realm, but you're also learning um, from experience in education. You're seeking mm -hmm. out education so that you we don't can, know it all. We don't know it yeah. all, and, and, and it will never stop and, you know, keep growing. Um, 
like I said, we did not have YouTube back then. YouTube is yeah. amazing. I mean, it can either <laughs> take you to down the rabbit hole, but um, you're learning this, and all of a sudden you're like, how did I end up kind of cooking cupcakes over here, you know, or something? <laughs> um, oh yeah, you can change a tire. <laughs> you can tune up your car on YouTube. You know what I mean? Just well, and so I just follow certain channels, certain subscribe, you know, certain channels, and I'm like, oh my god, there's like five thousand videos, and there's everyone always has that lazy time, that downtime, and yeah. All right, let me watch one solid, you know, one point five. One forty-five minute, uh, an hour podcast of whatever, and then yep. there's this one group that I follow, and um, they're very popular. And I know you guys possibly, I think you guys follow them too. Um, you know, best hour of the day, kind of, you know, the, mm -hmm. the most people. And there was this right. one episode that I saw, and I was like, I had to to know if your gym is like, you know, good or whatever. And I'm like, or how to know if you're a good coach or whatever. And I'm like, da 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 da, watching it. I'm like, okay, check done done. Okay, check check. But it just, Fucking cold. Oh, sorry. And I was like, freaking Kobe. <laughs> Kobe trained us way more than we were supposed to be trained. Like, yes. Wow. Okay. Well, well, okay. And then I just, he done good. Okay. He done good. Um, to be That's thrown very on. Validating like, too. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. And I was just like, okay. Well, dude, we're, we'll change chapter. Like, let's go to the next level. Um, so when he was in the whole hour and 45 minutes, he was talking. We're good. We're there. We checked all the boxes. Like me, especially you and everybody. We do everything. You're looking at the events, um, the the, the clinics, uh, everything. The talking, yeah. the getting to know your people, the the listening factor. The the, the we're all therapists here too. We all have issues ourselves. But yeah, I just graded or evaluated ourselves with the podcast that I was watching. I was like, that's great. Okay, we're good. We're good. We got an A plus. Um, um speaking of yeah. education, though, you're. <laughs> learning about something new when it comes to your body right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you're probably not the only one that's going through it and you're not the only one that is going to go through it at some mm -hmm. point, but I know you're going through some menopause. Menopause. That is something that I, I can definitely learn about as well. Um, when I was younger, no, not me. Hey, uh, that year, just you, I'm not going to go through that. No, honey, this is real. It's uh, it's natural. Yeah. Um, it's so, crazy. So tell me some of the stuff that maybe you've experienced with it, some of the stuff that maybe you've learned, um, and maybe some stuff that would be helpful to someone else that's maybe coming up on it um, mm -hmm. or things to think about. Um, it's, it's part of the womanhood. Um, I didn't start thinking about it or didn't start, you know, even caring about it until – Whoa, 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 what happened? Like, what is this? You know, um, I don't ever run to the doctor for certain things, like, say, have cold sweats, like, you know, anything. To me, I'm like, okay, we'll figure it out and see if it happens again. And and so, luckily, I found this doctor that I go to, and um, she listens to me. She has me on, like, you know, your future, this is what it's going to look like. But if this happens, do this and call me. And I'm like, okay, okay. So, we're in good communication. I'm sorry, we're in good communication um, standard there. And, uh, um, I think it all starts when you're 9, 10, 11 years old, when you get your first menstrual cycle. So Good. if you're a nine-year-old, you're going to go through it at, you know, as early as 40, 43. But, you Good. don't, you know, they're like baby glitches. You're just like, what the heck was that, you know? Yeah. Uh, there, there's a long list of stuff that we feel. Um, I'm a self-soother. Um, I have a headache, and I'm like, okay, headaches, you know, I don't know. I know I don't have a brain tumor. So it's going to be muscular. So then I go off and just massage my head and, oh, God. Uh, or I get on the foam roller. Um, I have, you know, cold sweats. A little bit scarier for me because, you know, you're not supposed to get cold sweats. And you're just like, what the heck was that? Um, the hot flashes, on the other hand, those are those are crazy. Um, our temperature levels are uh, broken. I mean, we can't control it. Uh, yeah. You're, you know, got the fan on. And you're like, you open all those windows because it's hot. And you're just like, oh, my God, I think I'm in it. Um, but slowly, you slowly, gradually go to it. And then yeah. you're like, no, I think I'm fine. And then, you know, I talk to all the friends from work and, oh, no, girl, I just you. And I'm like, well, when did you get your period? And they're like, oh, like, well, oh, okay, then I got it early. So yeah. I hope to be done by 51. Um, okay. There's cravings. There's insomnia. There's yeah. hormonal imbalances. There's anxiety that I've never experienced. And then there's like, all of a sudden you're like, I just want to cry. Why? I don't know. I just cry. And then, you know, the yeah. kids are like, just cry. But I don't have a reason to. It's just that feeling of like, give me something to cry about. Give me something to 
get the yeah. tears out. But the feeling is there, like the, ooh, the blackness and the gloominess, and yeah. Oh, and then the the that's the what be depression or I don't know what it is. I'm like, what the yeah. heck is going on with me? Um, yeah. There's there's clumsiness. So you're like, wow. So things don't work right. Um, yeah. And like, where is this deri- Where is this derived? Where is this coming from? Like, what is this? So I talk to the doctor, and I'm like, well, you know, I don't sleep and this and that, but. But um, I started taking these pills, and these pills help. And she's like, "Okay, you didn't, you didn't good. You check." And then um, hot flashes. And they just feel like, like if I just finished working out, like the heat that we feel mm. at the end, and the sweat and everything. Yeah. That's exactly how it feels. So then it goes away. So you're just like, you know, I could be cutting your hair, and I'm like, hold on a second, hold on, here it comes. And then it could be 30 seconds. It could be like, what the heck, like, and then I am soaked wet, like if I just did a lot. So I know wow. the feeling. And then yeah. um, these girls at work are like. I can't go to work because I'm having back the backlash. Oh my god, girl! I've had like, like twelve this listen. morning. You know, um, <laughs> yeah. so I'm always sweating, and uh, then the next day, next week or two, nothing happened, and it's great. Yeah. And then, okay, so then I soothe my insomnia and I soothe my hot flash. Well, I can't soothe the hot flash. Those are just <laughs> they're they're taking charge. Um, yeah, but everything else, the clumsiness, and I'm like, no, no, no. How would you how would you fix uh, uh, clumsiness? Well, I'll get your phone and put notes and, and, and reminders. And I have reminders left and right. Um, I can't be a procrastinator in any way, shape, or form because next thing I know, I'm like, why did I come to CVS for? And like, you can't be that stupid. And I'm like, when you're there, yeah. you're like, I did, how, where does it go? Like, so that's the scary part. Are we like, oh my God, I, this is crazy. So there's some crazy moments. So what, and, what um, would you, what is one thing maybe, or a few oh, things that you would. Oh, there was a chronic, there is a chronic fatigue moment. And okay. then that one was a weird one for me to distinguish and find out what, like, what is this? I don't have energy. Like, but why do you have breakfast? Like, energy. Where does the mm. energy come from? Movement and, 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 and food and, and, and stress. And I'm just like, this is weird. Like, why do I just want to lay in bed? I don't get it. And then, well, well, if your body, listen to your body, try to take a nap. And I would, like, take, you know, 20, 30 minute nap. And I'm like, that's not it. And I just, Good. Tried to find it and try to focus where the answer could be, and then okay, well, start taking some vitamins, start you know pumping up with caffeine, or like do something that you can counteract it. And, yeah, yeah, but it's ongoing, and hope I hope to be done in the next two years. It's crazy. Um, what is what is something that you would maybe perspective or advice that you'd give to someone that like is planning or preparing to go through that? Go through that. Um, talk talk to somebody who's been going through it. Um, uh, I try to share it here in class. I'm like, all right, guys, I'm sorry, I'm a woman and I'm having hot flashes left and right, and I'm gonna start sweating in front of you without even uh, working out. And then, and then it goes away, and they just laugh at me. But I'm sharing it with them that this is a crazy hot flash day. And then, um, maybe not laugh at you, but maybe you'll laugh with they you. They laugh with me. I hope they laugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, just I don't think we have very many ladies over 40 it's sort of like 43 44 45 mm-hmm. but if they are interested i'm here to listen i'm here to talk and I think that's good advice. write it yeah but if they don't like the feelings of all these things they can always talk to their doctor and i think they will give you yeah. hormonal therapy okay and that's something that i did ask i'm like do i need hormone injections like i hear all these things and she's like only if you are um if your day if you can't function today your day with all these symptoms and i'm like mm-hmm. uh-huh. Well, I'm a soother, so I'll find a way to fix yeah. it. Cool. Love you that. Know. Thanks for sharing. Um, I learned some more things today. I thought I knew a lot about Isabel, and I learned a bunch more stuff that I didn't know about Isabel. I did not know this that you like girl to school. <laughs> skip classes. Yes. I don't picture never you did as any, a class I never skipper. drank. I, ne- I never drank then. I didn't know smoke weed. I didn't do any alcohol, stuff like that. Just skipping Love. classes. Just for the uh, fun of that's then great. I was, I, I almost didn't graduate. Right. Remember that? I almost didn't graduate. Yeah, just almost didn't graduate. Just because of those skipping classes. Yeah. It's wild. Um, I didn't know that you worked at two different fast food spots, mm-hmm. Taco Bell, short stand at Taco Bell, longer stand at, yeah. at McDonald's. Super interesting as well. So yeah. I appreciate you sharing, and I'm sure that everyone else um, will appreciate getting to know you a little bit more. The non-fitness side of Isabel, um, yeah. sometimes it makes us... A little bit more relatable as coaches it makes us a little bit, um, you know, maybe even our coaching, our word, our perspective 
hit a little bit harder. Um, yeah. Knowing some of the things that we've gone through or knowing some of the things that we've dealt with or experienced um, on top of what we're actually doing inside classes as well. Yeah. So I appreciate you having having you on the Movement for Life podcast. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. You are definitely a living example of our mission, inspiring, educating, and leading. Um, so we love having you here on our coaching staff. Um, I hope that you enjoy being here too. Um, if somebody wants to find you that isn't currently at the gym, but they want to follow along or maybe ask you questions, do you have somewhere that maybe somebody can get in touch yeah. with you? Either email or Instagram. Email or Instagram. Yeah. So I, you feel comfortable with me putting your email and Instagram onto sure. the show notes? Sure. Beautiful. Okay. I will put your email and Instagram on the show notes. If anybody wants to reach out to Isabel, ask her questions about skipping class or <laughs> menopause, whatever Anything. you'd like to ask her. <laughs> um, I'm sure she'd be happy to chat with you. Until next week, we will have another staff member on next week. We'll find out who that is shortly. For now, enjoy your Thursday, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.